The van was now stripped of all of its wiring, both original Mercedes and ambulance. With all of the wiring, the engine, gearbox, steering wheel, basically everything that makes it go, now removed, we were as far back as we needed to go and to start rebuilding back up with the new stuff. That started with the unbastardised replacement wiring loom, which I got onto straight away while it was fresh in my mind and got fed back into all the places it needed to go. With the engine bay at this stage I also started to replace certain items that were worn on mine. The washer bottle was one of the first as mine was really tatty and got a slight leak and yet the donors is box fresh. And whilst that was being swapped it also gave me a chance to get to the dodgy bent bonnet stay. Here's a bit you don't normally see. I've um, I've forgotten which way round the bonnet stay goes. So now I'm having to go through footage I've just recorded to uh, see if I can spot it and see which way round it used to go. Okay. That is that way round. <laughs> good, good. Carry on. Next was the pedal box. I'd already loosened the master cylinder to get to the washer bottle, so it was just a case of backing the bolts all the way out, unclipping a few sensors and giving it a good pull. There we go. Hmm. So that one's metal. This one's plastic. But it does have all of the bits for a clutch pedal that have hardly been used. It was here whilst rejigging cameras I realised once again I had shit on my face. It's from underneath isn't it, that was earlier on. Yep, I've looked like this all day. <laughs> I went out earlier as well. Right, we're a few days in, I've uh, been here a little while now. It's proving to be difficult here with likes of recording stuff. Um, we're by a pretty busy road. You can always hear that generator going throughout the day. There's work being done next door. Um, and because it's winter and one light, once it goes dark, it's a problem in here. However, the problems are slowly being worked through. Hello. Better? Oh my God. Just be in here, carry on talking, doing what I need to do inside do a little bit of in here you can still hear me make a cup of tea you can still hear me oh my god what a game changer alex you're a legend <sighs> all right then second of all uh, i've just done a big order for screw fix and i've ordered some more lights so that when it does get dark um i can continue on without having torch light because if it's ridiculous. So yeah, apologies that the quality has been quite low for a while. It's been one of them. I've been so focused in actually getting the things done um, and just, you know, plonking the camera up and pressing go. Haven't really been um, figuring it out until I come to the editing process. And it's been like, oh no, the audio shagged or the camera's flickering or, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, I've now noticed it. So we can carry on. And uh, I'm gonna start off in the engine bay again. So I gave up on the pedal box last night um, because it just got so dark I couldn't really see anything. I got the new washer reservoir in, uh, that just needs one more bolt on there. That means that can now go in and the pedals can go on and all this sort of jazz. Um, while I was doing all that, I have uh, gave, I don't know if I recorded it, but I gave this um, inner panel, inner wing panel and the arch, a bit of a sand down, blast up with new paint, got rid of all the rust and treated it all. So uh, that's all now looking nice and matte black. And the whole engine bay is going to be the same. Uh, that's Emma's domain. She's asked if she can do a paint job in here. And I'm like, help yourself. So she's going to come in and clean all this out, um, sand it all back and get it all nice and matte black. And just make the engine bay look, you know, a bit tied up. Same with the bonnet lid. Uh, that's still white from when I replaced the bonnet. Um, and it's always just looked a bit tatty in here. So while it's at this stage, why not make it look nicer? Um, I swapped over the exhaust uh, flexi because my one is shagged absolutely it's starting to splinter and it's gone all rusty that one basically brand new so 
that's been swapped over. Um, engine mounts, I did get them off the donor van, but it's one of them, it's like for the price of it, just, I think they were like 18 quid for the pair. And it's like, yeah, while I'm at this stage, just replace for new, how often do you have your engine out and can do these relatively easily. Um, yeah, steering rack, again, with the engine out, it makes it a lot easier job. It's not an easy job. Um, trying to get the steering arms off it is gonna be a nightmare, but um, a lot easier than with the engine in. So I'm gonna get that off, uh, hopefully today, clean up the new one, get that in, um, and all piped up and ready to be bled. Already there's a few issues with the wiring loom. I knew it was gonna happen, but luckily so far, it's not been too bad. We've got the um, brake fluid reservoir and the washer um, motor. Both the uh, clips on the wiring loom for the older van are different, completely different. Uh, in fact, the motor on my one is three wires. This only has two. So I'm gonna cut these off, figure out which way round these will go to make the motor work be done with it luckily the reservoir for the brake fluid is just two wires so just cut the plug off reattach that one's done as long as it's not a big bulky 16 pin bastard that i'm gonna have to like resolder and hope i've got the right around um swapping of plug ends is is, is doable i knew it was going to happen the steering rack mounts uh the paint job uh, i've got to fix that because i can't believe i did it what a dickhead i was like no nah, i'll just cut that off and replace that half why didn't I just take the whole matting out? I don't know. Now I've got a repair to do in the middle there, twat. Once that's all done, uh, it's basically ready for the engine. But um, before even that happens, I'm gonna have to get the engine up, floating, and I'm gonna give that a good clean up, um, check everything's good, swap things like the alternator over because this one was a higher powered one. Uh, and I think I'm gonna bang a clutch in it as well, clutch and thrust bearing. Again, at this stage, it'd be silly not to, it's so much easier to do it now. And because it's a manual, not a semi-automatic, it's half the price. But the van was at the mileage where you'd suspect the van might have some clutch wear. I don't know how hard that van's been driven. Um, it just makes sense to bang a new clutch in it. And then once all that's done, <laughs> we can uh, pop the engine back in and start to plug everything back in, um, seeing if this whole transplant is gonna be successful. Right, enough chat. Really should get back to work. And uh, it's pretty cold today. I'll get some gloves. I got started by pulling the old loom back out, sifting through it to get to the clips that I needed to replace and chopping them off. Get out and in. What are you doing? I don't know what you are, but you're no longer going through the clutch hole. That's for me now. Um, ah, is that the old air con? Something doesn't need it. Put you through there. Move. Oh. Let's remove the security pin. Okay, so put you in there. You need to go around a bit. Okay. Uh, yes. Try and bang a bolt on it, pull it in. I just thought you were all going to be able to just hear me breathe now. <laughs> Cheat a little bit on this one. Oh. <laughs> this occurred to me the other day just the sheer amount of bleeding I've got to do when all this is back in. Power steering, 
brakes, clutch, me. Why have I done it to myself? You could have ended up with one of them lovely old 410Ds that you wanted, or an old Vare or something. But no, here you are keeping a 2004 mobile trauma unit going. Wonderful. Well, she's mine. Whoa, my van has a clutch pedal. <laughs> no. Let's put you, which one's the best one? They're both about the same. Let's get you in there. Rejigged. You. How the f do you work? There we go. Brake back on. Clutch. Something up here somewhere. Where are you? There you are. Go on, get on that. Get on that. Get on that. What are you doing? There we go. So yeah, we've got this to go back on the steering rack. And basically as the pedal gets pushed to a certain point, that releases and that's what triggers my um, brake retarder on the prop so I've got to get that pretty pretty well lined up um, there's a brake uh, sensor for the brake lights where do you go I've forgotten where you go where do you go Oh, there's that bolt up there to get back on as a bastard. There you are. After plugging the sensors back in, we were done. For the first time ever, my van has three pedals. Now we just needed to feed all the pipes to that pedal and plumb it all in. This was actually really simple as all the pipes were shaped to the van. The pipe clips all had a spare third port for the pipe just to click onto and follow the rest of them. Even the brake reservoir had a spare capped off outlet that I just had to snip and reattach the clutch pipe to. Right then, onto the steering rack. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, this was a shit show from start to finish. I was gonna delete absolutely all of it, skip straight to the resolution and just do a little bit in voiceover. But that would be hiding the truth of the story, wouldn't it? And to be honest, you'll probably find some sort of entertainment value from this absolute cluster. So here we go. I got the replacement rack out and gave it a good eye over. From quick glance, it looked identical to the one that was coming out of my van. But this one had lived under a grit truck its entire life and lived in salt, so on the exterior it was a little tatty. So I started by giving it a sand back and a good lick of paint to give it a new lease of life. Right then, old steering rack. Uh, I need to get to the steering arms, which are relatively inaccessible. There are you. You're over there. <laughs> I need to turn the wheel. Uh, Ah. This is not as easy as it looks. With that weird little adjustment out of the way, I can now get to the joint that holds the wheels to the steering rack. And embarrassingly, it was here I realised I could just jack the van up, taking the weight off the wheels and I could turn them freely.
sick of Portugal being in my face. There we go, one steering rack out. And with new and old side by side, you'd still think they were like for like. But no. Uh, another problem. <laughs> this is going to be a very common theme, I think. Away, 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 away. Power steering fluid everywhere. Good boy. <laughs> so the um, steering racks are different. I... <laughs> There's two different steering racks for the 15 inch wheeled sprinter and the 16 inch wheeled sprinter. They look identical until you get them next to each other and then you just see very subtle differences. Um, the donor trucks one is a little bit thicker. Um, it looks the same in sort of length but then the um, suspension arm is probably an inch longer. <laughs> And uh, worst of all, the whole front subframe, the mounts that hold the bracket on, are different by five mil. Unbelievable. <laughs> so I've been having a bit of a head scratch today and occupying myself with things like the engine mounts um, because I've just been trying to think, right, what's the next course of action? I've gone online and uh, priced up a new steering rack of this model uh, they're not cheap and I've got one right there that's basically new so I've been weighing it all up um, the only thing that's going to be different and problematic is obviously the mounts um, they're gonna to have to be adjusted and all I can really do with the five mil just to get that drill all four holes just a smidge bigger and I'll have enough play to get all the bolts in so that'll be fine the bar being a little bit longer is obviously going to blow my tracking out but I'll just have to take the um, track rod ends off wind them in a bit put them back on and get the get the van tracked when it's back on the road and then eventually I mean I've got the 16 inch wheel sat outside still and I'm debating whether to put them on or not I mean I have just managed to get uh, Michelin or Gillis cross climates on all seven wheels so I finally match with um, all terrains but if I put the 16s on, that means I have a load rated wheel and I can go for big knobblies or, you know, some proper all terrains, which is favorable. And I mean, I've never seen 16 inch wheels for this model. They're like hen's teeth. So it would make sense to put them on and sell this, um, sell this set off. So yeah, after much deliberation and a bit of a tangent there, um, I'm gonna go and head I'm going to go ahead and fit this um, 16 inch wheel steering rack. I've sanded it all down and painted it earlier and gone to all the piss and effort of taking the old one off. I'm not putting the old one back on, nor am I paying £300 for a refurb. So I dove in and started fitting the Pandora's box of steering racks. gonna play ball and go in on the last bolt. <clears throat> oh. Son of a bitch. You f oh, I swear to God I ate this. 16 mil, where are you? Yes, I fought Mercedes and I won. Oh, there's a knuckle gone, another one. Marvellous. The thing about having so many jobs on at once, you've got to remember, double check over everything, Let's not leave anything. Because once the engine goes back in and once everything's all there ready to go, you guarantee it's going to be impossible to get to if you've forgotten I'm not actually sure how you um, bleed a, steer a power steering I don't know if it's self bleeding if it just starts to take the fluid and 
does its own air sort of bleed or if you've got to do it I have no idea okay so that's now on after a whole evening day whatever you want to call it so now we can start to put all this shit back on and by this shit I mean the engine mounts these are kind of in the way whilst you're fitting the steering rack so it's nice when they're out of the way if you've ever had to change an engine mount on a Sprinter or an LT you'll know that it's basically impossible to get to the top bolt there's two and the other one it's in like a triangle area so most tools don't get up in there now I'm sure there's a doofangle tool that you could buy but I've opted for just ramming that in there and bending it back so that you can get the spanner down there. I mean, obviously, if you've got a really nice pristine paint job, don't do that. But I don't, so saves having to faff. <gasps> Another top tip that a lot of you will know, but some of you might not. My dad taught me this many moons ago. So I'm having to use a small spanner here just to get in, and because I, I've lost my 16 long one. But now, obviously, I've not got enough meat to then push over, not enough leverage. But if you get another spanner and just do that, you've just made it longer. There you go. Get up, get on it. Get up, where have them bolts gone? Interesting, where did I put? The other engine mount bolt. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Have you fell down? Hello. That is one. Where is numero dos? <sighs> ah, but I know where it's gone. No. Interesting, annoying, but also interesting weather. For you then, let's get one on the back, bitch. Have to start getting the old uh, tie rod, track rod arms, steering arms, whatever the hell you call them. I will get on to them in a minute. I'm just amusing myself with an engine mount because it's easier. Easy when you don't lose the bolts. <laughs> Why? Why does this always happen? <sighs> oh, wait. Hmm. Moron. I've got the spares. Where are the spares? If I put the bolts on the, uh, the them, then we're good. Oh, look. Ah, yes. Saved my ass. Marvellous. Yeah. Get all this reassembled while we're here as well. Just found all the air box and what have you in the uh, trailer as well, so might as well go back on and complete the corner. Such a strange air box on these things. Now in about five seconds I'm going to realise that as the brake cylinder went back on it trapped one of the clips and now I can't get to it. In... What have you done? Why have you gone down you f***ing c***? As we were saying nice and easily that just went on like that. Didn't take 20 minutes just to take the entire box off and move that flap. Me again, it's always me, it's my channel. My problems with the steering rack just keep on shifting down throughout the rest of the vehicle. Um, I've just gone to put the tie rod end on. Obviously I've had to take it off because I need to get the new boot on, which is wider because it's a new steering rack. Uh, but when you compare the two ends together, this one is thicker than this one. So it doesn't f***ing well go in. So I've just called Yura Car Parts and um, I've ordered some more of these. Um, yeah, I'm going full ball with it basically. 
Um, I'm forcing this bastard to fit. And that's the reason I didn't use the donor vans. Um, my lights and everything else have arrived at Screwfix. I'm gonna go and grab them, grab some new tie ends, and then we can carry on. So I hopped in Lenny and made my way to town. Buying this little Lupo was the best purchase during this project. It's been an absolute godsend. And like all older Volkswagens, Lenny just eats the abuse. He's given me the ability to still get about, go and collect parts, when my only other vehicle is in a thousand pieces. And now we're off to go and get more pieces I didn't think I'd need. Yeah, it's one of them. I've pushed forward and said, no, I'm fitting that steering rack. And now I'm having to change the bits. But I think the pair was 20 some quid, so it doesn't exactly break the bank. Yeah, I've also got them to price me up a clutch kit and ever else I was looking at 200 odd, 250. Uh, they can do it with the two plates and the thrust bearing that always goes on the sprinters uh, for 160 quid. So I'll take that. I am starting to have some worries that I'm gonna have the same issue that I had last time I did a clutch change. Go take the gearbox back out. Get your bum out of my face. Come on, you bastard. I have took my gearbox out seven times. Oh, I'm actually shaking with anger. But this is a manual, so should be better. I hope. I have had to remember as well, and will have to in the future, to give the donor van's reg plate for anything to do with the gearbox uh, or like what I've changed basically for the 616 stuff. I've got to remember that and give a different reg plate whenever I order parts in the future. Really haven't helped myself. But you know, if it gives the old gal a couple more years, then it's all good, isn't it? Oh, it's that time of year again where Lance is always wet and very smelly, isn't it? Okay. It's alright bro, at the minute I'm in the same boat. This is really nerdy, but the camera up there reminds me of something. Oh, it's you. You know her? It's been a long time. How have you been? And we're back, now accompanied by some nice lighting. And for more extensions, there's a light over there as well now. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see a bit more. Thank you to everyone that messaged in about my flickering issue and the hurts. I don't know how it works, but um, yeah, changed the camera setting and it's now pretty good. So, I've got the new ones. They are an inch longer. Don't know why. That could present me more of an issue than I've already got. We'll just have to find out, won't we? It didn't take long at all into fitting these to realise that yes, they were going to cause me more problems. It hasn't worked. The, um, the new track rods are just that bit longer and the thread count ends... I don't know if you can even see it. The thread count basically ends on this one where I needed to begin. So, um, yeah, that's not ideal, that. I can't get it to where I need it to be. I mean, the wheels will bow outwards and it will just knacker the track in. <sighs> so, I might have to admit defeat on that one. Bastard. <laughs> I can't believe they've changed it over that amount of one inch difference in wheels all that's different I can't baffles me I mean the front hubs are outside but they're pretty tatty I'm not taking the hubs off it's just it's gonna get ridiculous I'm gonna look I think at a um... but as much as I didn't want to because I wanted to be able to pilfer as much off the donor van as possible and make it work. I might have to just go ahead and buy a new steering rack as well. And they're not cheap. 
which is why I didn't do it. It's two days wasted. Two days I don't really have. I pulled the steering rack back off and then feeling pretty damn deflated, called it a day. This was a battle I just wasn't gonna win.